thank the worship team. Thanks so much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a stand. Okay. We want to welcome And you know what? You didn't come here to hear me speak. You're going to hear me speak, though. But what you came here for was to receive something from the Lord. You came to the right place, okay? Because the Lord has something for you. So I'll have a little, uh, little message here, a few scriptures to get you primed and ready to receive everything God has for you, okay? I'm going to talk about healing a little. Now, you might need deliverance. You might need healing. You might need emotional healing. You might need physical healing. But this is called a healing service, so I've got to talk about healing a little bit, right? If God still heals the sick today, how come so many good Christian people are sick? Good question, huh? Thousands of sick and suffering people in the world today would love to believe in divine healing because it could mean deliverance from a life of suffering. People would like to believe it. It's a a good thing if it's true, isn't it? Many people want to believe but they won't believe until they get some questions answered first. That's the way we are a lot of times. Blind faith, childlike faith doesn't ask a lot of questions. But adult faith asks questions. Well, wait a minute. What about this? What about that? What about this? Children just say, okay. Many of those who already believe in divine healing ask almost the same questions that the world asks. They say, others are healed, so I know that God does heal, but why am I not healed? Is God a respecter of persons? Does God pick and choose his favorites? Does he put one man over another man, one woman over another woman? Well, Romans 2.11 says, God is not a respecter of persons. He considers us all the same. If God's promises of healing apply to anyone, to anyone then they apply to everyone. You see that? If God gives a promise to one and says to that one, all of your brothers and sisters are the same as you, then guess what? When he gives the promise to that one, he gives it to us all, right? James 5, 14 and 15 say this. If there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. This says, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. You know, the elders of the church, it's not like it's a position. It means those that are seasoned in the Lord that know what they're talking about. Those that actually have learned healings for a day, God heals. They know how to minister to you, okay? You call for them. Why are you calling for them? Because you're sick. Why are you calling for somebody that can't do you any good? No, you're calling for somebody because you actually believe what God's word says is if the elders of the church pray for you, you'll be healed. So just the fact that you would reach out to somebody or come to this service tonight is an act of faith. All the people that came to Jesus hoping they would be healed were exercising some faith just to come to him. Just the fact they go, I'll show up. Because in his own hometown, not a lot of people showed up. And guess what? If you don't show up, you don't get healed. We're showing up tonight. Everybody in this room has faith. We have different levels of faith, but everybody's got some faith, and God's going to work with what you've got, okay? So if healing is for everyone, and yet we're not seeing it for everyone, appearing in everyone, what's the possible reason that could explain that? The reason that stands out above all other reasons is really quite simple. You're not good enough. No, that's not it. You don't deserve it. No, that's not it either. You aren't paying tithes. That's not it either. Okay? Uh, You cuss too much. That's not it either. That's not it either. But the Bible says the reason we don't have, of course it says you don't have because you don't ask, but suppose you ask and don't get. The reason a lot of people aren't healed is because they don't have faith. It's a lack of faith. Now, I want to tell you something that's gone around for years and years and years, and it doesn't go here. Okay, And that is this, the faith healer that comes to you 
and says, if you have faith, God will heal you tonight. And then they pray. And then they walk away. And you go, I didn't get healed. They go, well, that's because you didn't have faith. That's not what Jesus did. Somebody's got to have faith. I can pray for people. You can pray for people that don't have faith and they can get healed. I've seen it done. I prayed for atheists that defied me and says, it won't work. And they got healed. As long as somebody has some faith in this room, people can get healed. Somebody's got to have some faith because God's got to get, have something to attach this thing to. Somebody has got to have faith. You may say, I have faith. I know God's able to heal me, but why doesn't he? Do you believe he will heal you now? There's different levels of faith. Some people say, I believe God can heal me. That's one level of faith. I believe God will heal me. That's another level of faith. I believe God will heal me now. That's a whole different level of faith. Okay? Some people say, I hope he will. And I do know that God heals, but I'm not sure he wants to. Hope is a thought. And it's even a positive thought. But it's a thought that has no substance. Hope won't buy you anything. Hope will identify what you want, but it won't get it for you. The only thing that will get it for you is a thing called faith. The Bible says this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. You see, the thing that's hoped for doesn't have any substance until you add faith to it. And then it becomes substantial. Hope identifies what you want, but hope doesn't get it for you. Hope is the target you're aiming for, but faith is the arrow that hits the target. Someone needs faith in this place tonight. Somebody. Maybe God, this is a thought people have, maybe God is trying to teach you something through sickness. You know, God will teach you something in the midst of sickness and in spite of sickness, but he doesn't give you sickness to teach you something. Sickness is not of God. The Bible tells us that Jesus came to bear our sicknesses and our sins in his own body, and if Jesus bears them in his own body and carries them away, do you think he goes, I'm just carrying them away for a while. I'm going to come back and put them back on you. Do you think Jesus carries away your sins? And then later on he goes, you know, you need a lesson. I'm going to put your sins back on you. No, he carries them away, never to be found. Do you know when he carries your sins away, he carries your sickness away too. That's the dual nature of what occurred when Jesus died on the cross. And we'll read some scriptures concerning that. Now, here it is, Matthew 8, 16 and 17. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to Jesus. And he drove out the spirits with the word, and he healed all the sick. It says all the sick. And all means what? All. He healed all the sick. And why did he do that? This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Listen to what he says. He took our infirmities and carried our diseases. Where did he carry them? Back to your front door? Jesus took a great beating of many stripes upon his back. Stripes were laid upon his back so that we would be able to benefit from what he did for us so that we wouldn't have to bear the sicknesses ourselves. It says, by whose stripes you were healed. Right? So you realize that the redemptive work that Jesus accomplished on the cross was to address two major issues which had plagued man since the fall of Adam. Sin and sickness. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his own body. That would be good enough, but the scripture doesn't end in the fact that he bore his sins in his own, our sins in his own body. It says that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, by whose wounds we have been healed. The sins and the wounds have to do with healing and forgiveness. If Jesus paid the price for our sins, and if Jesus carries our sins away, then Jesus isn't the one bringing them back. The devil's called the accuser of the brethren. The devil comes to those who have been set free from something. It's no longer something that God even looks at in their life because they've been forgiven. And the devil reminds them and rehearses to them, well, maybe you haven't been forgiven for this. Maybe you didn't repent enough. Maybe this and that. The devil brings the remembrance of the sins back, but God doesn't do that. The devil brings sickness to people. 
When Jesus came, he said this, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And if you read it in the context, then he went about and healed all that were sick. Sickness is of the devil. Sickness is something that Jesus took care of on the cross. God is not glorified when Christians continue in sickness. He's glorified when Christians are healed. Maybe God is just trying to teach you patience through the sickness. Well, he can teach you patience while you're sick, but he didn't give you the sickness to teach you patience because, see, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It's not a fruit of sickness. It's a fruit of the Spirit. You want patience? It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of sickness. All you, you know, you want to be patient? All, all we got to do is get you really sick. That's, that's not the Bible. It's not the Bible. If some individuals experience patience while they're suffering, patience can result from bad things that happen to us, but God, that doesn't mean that God sent us the bad things, okay? You see, here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes when you're in the midst of something like sickness, you do something different. You begin to reassess yourself, and you begin to say, I need to get right with God. I need to get close with God. And so you find you get closer to God. But you know what? The sickness wasn't there to get you closer to God. It was the fact that you made a decision to say, I will press into God. And you know, you can do that while you're healthy and you still get the same benefit. You don't have to be sick. You can say, while you're healthy, I'm going to press into God and you will be benefited. You don't have to wait till you're sick. Okay? You will find that whether sick or not, the more attention you give to God and to the things of God, the more fruit of the Spirit you're going to bear. If God, who never changes, uses sickness to teach patience and long-suffering, surely at some time in Jesus' ministry, he would have said to someone seeking deliverance, go thy way, remain sick until you've learned patience. Then you may seek me again and perhaps I'll heal you. Did that ever happen? Not once did he give that kind of an answer. Not once did he command any person who was well to become sick so they might learn something. Can you imagine? Jesus says, you know what? Peter, you're a rather impatient man. I'm going to put sickness on you to help you. Did that happen? That wasn't one of the tools he uses, right? Not once did he give such an answer to any man. He did not once say, today is not your day to be healed. Not once when people were brought to him did he say, you know what? I don't want to heal you, but I'm going to heal you. Not once did he say, you have not quite learned the full lesson. Another year of sickness and you'll be there. Come back in a year. Not once did he say that. It says that all that were brought to him, he healed. Okay? All who came to Jesus for healing were healed. He not one was turned away. So what's the missing component Missing components always the same. Jesus said, it's your faith. And you might go, I don't know if I got enough faith for that. It's okay. There are people in this room that have enough faith for you. Okay? That's why we come together. That's why the person is calling for the elders of the church. Because maybe that person in bed, his faith is really at a low level at that moment. And he needs somebody else to have faith. Okay? We're not going to blame you for not having enough faith. We're going to say, you can come here with no faith at all, and we're going to have faith for you. And God's going to heal. Remember the scripture that said about calling for the elder of the church? Remember it said, and the prayer of faith will save the sick? What kind of prayer was it? The prayer of faith. Remember when the disciples of Jesus were having difficulty delivering a boy possessed by a demon? And they asked Jesus, why couldn't they? Here's what he said, John 17, 19 through 20. Afterward, the disciples came to Jesus privately and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He said this, because you have so little faith. Oh, that's it? That, that's it. You have so little faith. For truly, I tell you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, move from here and go to there, and nothing will be impossible to you. So Jesus said, your problem was you just didn't have enough faith. He didn't say the demon-possessed boy had to have any faith, or his father even. He said, you guys didn't have enough faith. That's what it said. Who has to have faith tonight so that you can receive healing? Anybody. That's all it takes. And that's all it takes. One person who's got faith. It can be the person praying for you. 
It can be the person being prayed for. It can be the person coming on behalf of another. It can be the person who brought the person to be prayed for. Somebody's got to have some faith. And here's a few examples in the Bible. Numerous times in the Bible, Jesus healed people who didn't even know who he was. Okay? And, and had never come to him for healing. He saw them. He went to them. He healed them. And they go, what happened? They weren't saying, I knew that would work. I knew you'd heal me. They go, I, I don't even know who the guy is. There was a blind boy. He was, well, he's grown up to be a man. But since a childhood, he was blind. And he couldn't see. And Jesus saw him. And he didn't see Jesus. Jesus saw him. And he didn't cry out, oh, Jesus, have mercy on me. He was just sitting there. And his disciples said to, to Jesus, said, what do you suppose he's blind? Is it because his parents sinned or because he sinned? He goes, no, it's, it's none of that. But it says Jesus went over and he spit in the dirt. And he put some mud in the kid's eyes, you know. And he told him to go and wash. In other words, the kid's still never seen Jesus yet because he's got to go somewhere and wash. And after he washed, uh, the priest noticed, oh my gosh, this kid who's never seen in his whole life is seeing. How did that happen? Who did this to you? And he goes, well, it's some guy they called Jesus. They go, Jesus, don't you know that man's a sinner? He goes, you know what? I don't know if he's a sinner or not, but I do know this. I was blind and now I can see. Right? So that boy didn't have faith. Jesus had the faith in that particular case, right? Jesus obviously has faith. In Matthew 9, there was a woman who had been bleeding for years, the woman with the issue of blood, and she was healed. She wasn't healed by Jesus praying for her. She had faith for herself. It was her faith that healed her. Matthew 9, 20, suddenly a woman who had suffered from bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment. It says this, because she had said to herself, she said it to herself, Jesus didn't say it, she said to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will be healed. She said it to herself. Jesus turned and saw her, and what did he say? Take courage, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you. Did you get that? She said, if I can touch Jesus, I'll be healed. Jesus wasn't even paying attention to her. He touched, she touched him from the back, and he goes, who touched me? But she had faith that if I do this, I will be healed. Jesus had faith for the blind man to be healed. This woman had faith for herself to be healed. Okay? Then there was a man who may have had no faith at all, but his friends had faith. Someone needs to have faith, and his friends had faith. And they decided if we could just get this guy to Jesus, he'll be healed. We don't even know if the guy was cooperative, but it doesn't matter. He was paralyzed. What's he going to do? We're taking you to Jesus. No, no. What's he going to do? He can't do anything. I'm trying to run away, but I can't. What's he going to do? So they went to, they did that. They brought him to Jesus. It says just, Luke 5, 18, just then some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They tried to bring him inside to set him before Jesus. See, Jesus was in this house and it was full of people. They couldn't get in. But they could not find a way through the crowd. So they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd. They lowered him down through the roof, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw what? Their faith. He said, friend, your sins are forgiven. He was healed. Jesus saw their faith. Somebody had to have faith. In the first case, Jesus is the one praying who had the faith. The guy receiving didn't have any faith. He didn't know what's going on. In the second situation, the woman had faith for herself to be healed. In this situation, this man's friends had faith for him to be healed. But somebody's got to have faith. That's where it's all at. That's how we receive is by faith. So if you've come tonight and you're checking your wallet, say, I don't know if i got enough faith. I'll count what i got here. It doesn't matter if you're low. Other people here have faith for you. And we see healings every healing service. Every healing service. We see miracles every service. I had a guy, now if you guys are, any of you are my Facebook friends, you might have seen a couple weeks ago, I posted a letter that somebody sent me, okay? And this guy was up here last healing service. He came up from Oregon, I think it was, with a couple of friends. And I had, he had called me sometime way back and said, I've got a short leg, it's all, you know, bent and twisted, and I've had this for my whole life pretty much, and I've got all this pain in my hips, and he's had all kinds of issues. And he goes, if I can just get there, I know that I can be healed. He had faith. 
Well, he sat right there. We prayed for him. And he sent me a letter. This is like two, three weeks later. And the letter says this, everything's changed in my life. I've been healed since that day. I can do things I could never do before. I feel set free. I feel liberated. I feel like a brand new person. It was all because I showed up and got prayed for. Because somebody had faith. Tonight, you may not have much faith. Or you might have a little bit of faith. Or you might have no faith at all. Whatever the case, we who are going to be praying for you are going to have faith, okay? Rest assured of that. We're going to have faith. We who are going to be praying for you are sons and daughters of God. We are believers in Jesus Christ, and we believe what the Scripture says about us. So we're going to pray for you, and you're going to be healed. Now, here's what the Scripture says about sons and daughters of God. Matthew 16, 17, 18, and these signs will accompany those who believe. How many believers are here? Okay. It says, in my name, they will drive out demons. You got any demons? We'll drive them out. We'll drive them right off the cliff, man. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes. We're not going to be doing that tonight. That's next week. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not harm them. They will, listen to this, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will be made well. If you believe. Well, I guess it's all dependent upon one thing. If somebody in this room's got some faith. You know what? We got some faith. We got some faith. And after you've seen God do a few miracles and he blows your mind enough, you realize God can do anything. Anything at all. Many of us have seen miracles before our eyes. You know, you can't see some stuff. Some stuff's internal. You can't see it. But some stuff you can see with your eyes. Many of us have seen miracles right before our eyes. I know. I've got Emily back here. Now, Emily, she just decided she wanted to go out with me this last Thursday to pray for folks. So, Emily had seen stuff on YouTube, but she hadn't been firsthand in some of these things. So, here's what happened is we're in the mall, and I'm I'm hoping I'm going to find somebody that's got a really short leg. You know, we're going to pray for that. But anyway, we did find a guy with a short leg. And he got saved, by the way. But uh, I said, okay, Emily, you pray for this and just tell it to come out. And she did, and it came out. I thought that's good enough. She's seen a miracle. She's she's ready. She's primed. She's ready to go. But she told me today she went home, and there's her husband, Raymar. And Raymar said his wife came home and grew his leg out. Is that right, Raymar? (laughs) Way to go, Emily. (laughs) Way to go, Emily. Isn't that awesome? She saw something, and she said, I believe. God can do anything. God can do anything for you, too. So right now, we're going to start praying for folks, and I'm going to call up some folks to be teams with us up here. I got a lot of folks I could call up tonight, so I'll say, Jer and Gail, you're definitely a couple. And I think that Patrick and Aaron are a couple. (laughs) There you go. All right. And have you got Eddie with you there somewhere? Eddie, where are you, Eddie? Eddie wants to pray for folks tonight. And Jason and Eddie are going to come up. Okay? All right. So, well, I will do one more. I'm going to have my wife and my mother-in-law come on up. Okay. So, we got a whole team of folks here. Now, every one of these folks has seen miracles. There's not a person here who hasn't been praying for people before and seen miracles. You guys, can you? Can you guys... Make a little room here. So we're going to see miracles tonight. And the miracles are why. The miracles are because somebody believes. But somebody believes what? What Jesus already did. And that Jesus wants you to have what he's provided. Jesus loves you enough to not want to see you in pain any longer. He loves you enough that he already paid the price so you don't have to pay the price. Okay? So if you would like healing... I have to go there. If you would like healing, two lines next to, next to each other, right in this aisle. Here's the, just come and line up right here to the back. And we're going to begin to pray for you. And we're going to send you, you know, right, left, right, left, whatever it takes. And we're going to pray for everybody here. So I'm going to, I've already talked to Judy right here. So I'm going to pray for this young man here. So you come up here and the rest of you, 
just go to somebody, go to somebody, and they're going to start praying for you. 